Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and today we are doing our postcard tutorial for our Let's Make Art Matter for July. So, uh, we are going to paint an American flag waving in the wind. And um, if you are a subscriber, you should have this postcard in your subscription box. It comes pre-stamped, pre-addressed, so all you have to do is just paint on it and drop it in the mail. If you are not a subscriber, you can absolutely still participate in this. Just shoot us an email at hello at letsmakeart.com. We'll send you that address and you can do this on your own. Uh, we are using just three paints from our um, July box. So we're using, maybe I'll do a little, can you see right here? Yeah, I can see that. I'm going to do red. And we're going to do black and Tahoe blue. So just those three colors. Um, now for our let's, let's Make Art Matter, if you're not entirely sure what that is, what we like to do as a company and as a community is every single month we pick a new family or individual to paint something for and send them a little bit of love um, in the mailbox with art. It's just a really great way to show that Art is a wonderful way to express yourself and express love and care for other people. And I think it's really important to take the time out to think about someone else, even if you don't know them. Um, you can nominate someone if you go to letsmakeart.com. You find the Let's Make Art Matter blog post. There's a form there that's a nomination form if you think of someone that um, could use a little bit of love. And for this month, it's going to um, Sherry and Rick and they lost their son to um, suicide that was related to PTSD from serving in the military, um, which is really heartbreaking. And I'm really lucky and proud to live in America, um, but I think that those people that fight for that privilege see a lot of really hard things, and we need to make sure that we support them because the battle's not over just when they get home. So. They started a foundation in honor of their son, and I'm gonna read it so I don't get it wrong, but it's called the James R. Barrett Foundation for PTSD Awareness and Education. You can go to www.jrbarrett.org, and um, their favorite phrase is, your battle is my battle, so take the time to show Sherry and Rick or anybody that they're not alone in this, and we're here to support them. So, let's get started. Yes. Okay, we're gonna do this in a few steps. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna draw our flag. So there's no outline with this, you're gonna freehand it. I'll show you how you can make something look like it's waving. Um, then we're gonna color it in and then put in a sky. Maybe we should do the sky first. We'll do the sky first and then we'll do our flag. So, let's start. So I'm just gonna use a pencil for this. And as you can see, my flag isn't totally correct. I don't think I have the correct number of stripes, nor do I have any stars. <laughs> but <laughs> you can still tell that it's an American flag. Yes. So don't stress about that. I just want to show you how you can draw something to make it look like it has a little bit more dimension. So um, when we did our flag project, we just did it like totally flat, like 2D. We just did it like this, right? And there wasn't any depth to it. And if you want it to seem like it's waving, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create your like post. So here's like my pole. And then when you do your flag, you are going to put just a wave in it like that, okay? Now you don't wanna go too crazy because if you put your wave like this, that would still work. But then what you would have to do is put like a back here which makes it a little bit harder to do the lines that we're gonna do. So that's why I'm doing a soft curve. So then I don't really have enough room to do a back on that curve. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So after you do your soft curve, I'm going to do a line down from where that curve starts. Okay. And then I'm going to do the end of the flag. These are gonna be the same length from your middle to your end. And I'm gonna have the same curve as I do at the top. See how this has kind of a soft curve? I'm gonna follow that same curve here, okay? And then when I do the bottom of this part of the flag, because I want it to feel like this is kind of going in and farther away and then this is poking out, it's gonna come up 
and then curve in like that. So this curves out, this curves in, okay? Perfect. So there is my flag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to now put in my stripes and my um, part for the square for this star. Now if you want to um, do stars on your blue area, is there a better way to say that on the blue part? The field where the stars go? Yes, on the blue field you absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with that. Or if you want to do dots or maybe, I don't know, it's your painting. You can, you can decide that for yourself. I'm just going to leave mine blue and then I'm going to start putting in my stripes. Now when I start to put in my stripes, you have to think of these parts of the flag as two different areas. So like my stripe line is not going to match up over here because it's moving. Okay, so it's almost like it's two separate. So I'm going to do my first stripe here and it's going to follow the shape and then here's my first stripe on this side. Okay, and then you just kind of keep going. now. Try hard not to line them up like the stripes on this and this. So like I want to do my next stripe and it might make sense to do another one right here, but then that's going to line up perfectly with my first stripe and throw my eye off. So then you might have to do a little bit of adjustment. So you can either like move it down or move it up so it just doesn't, we just don't want it to line up perfectly. Okay, and then I'll do another one. Oh, that's still lining up too much. So just kind of like play with it and it's okay if you erase. There we go. Okay, that is looking better. Now your stripes might not be perfect, that's okay. Maybe I like, I think I liked how thick I made these. See how these are turning out thinner? I'm gonna make them thicker. If you wanna do yours thinner or do the exact number of stripes, feel free to do so. Just don't be mad at me or not. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's try that. Yeah. Okay. And you might have to like add a stripe if I do red, white, red, white, red, white, I'm gonna have to add an extra stripe because I don't want it to end on a white or start with the white. All right. Why don't you want it to end on a red and start with a, or a white? I said that backwards. I don't know. Oh. I just don't want it to. Okay. Let me look at a picture of American flag really quick. Perfect. I guess originally, well, it starts on a red and ends on a red on our actual American flag. And also, if you leave your background white, okay. then you wouldn't see that last stripe. That makes sense. But since we're doing like a background, you probably would st still see a white stripe at the end. I just wanted mine to start with the red and end with the red. It just wouldn't look as good if it was a white on the yeah, board. Yeah, I, th I think so. But you guys can prove me wrong your painting. Okay, so there's my flag. So now we're ready to paint and I'm going to start with the sky. Make sure you have a paper towel handy to soak up extra colors for our clouds. So do we have a good close-up? Is that a good angle? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little Tahoe blue and mix some water into there to get it a nice light blue. And then I'm just going to start putting in my sky and I'm gonna avoid some white sections so they can be clouds, okay? And then also around those white sections, I'm gonna do the paper towel trick where right after you put some paper towel on there. 
And then after I lift up from the paper towel, I'm gonna go along the edge of where that cloud was and just kind of darken it up and define it a little bit more. Now this is really, really light. You can make it, if you wanna do a sunset here, that would actually be really beautiful. You guys could do a sunset. That would look awesome. Yeah, it would look awesome. If you wanna do like fireworks, you can do fire, like you can do anything in this area. I'm just doing like a nice blue sky with some clouds. And you can put your clouds anywhere. They don't have to match mine. Now, even on your clouds, you don't want to leave them just totally white because if you look at clouds in the sky, they have dimension to them. They have value on them. So um, it's okay to do like a little bit of blue and then just take your paper towel and lift it up and it just gives it like a hint of shape. And again, you can make it as dark as you want or as light as you want. There have been some truly beautiful clouds lately in the sky. Yes. Midday, not so much when the sun is setting, when I have time to get some cool pictures. <laughs> okay, so there's our sky. And now we're gonna put in our flag. So, I'm gonna start with putting in, let's do the red. Let's start with the red. You wanna make sure the blue is dry. I think it's dry enough that I can start. So, I'm gonna switch to my round two. I'm gonna grab red. Can you hear that? It's just a truck backing up. It's fine. It's not a big deal. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put in red on my first stripe here. Now, in order for us to kind of get the feel that this is curved and it's moving and there's depth to it, when we get to the second part, I'm gonna use dark red at the edges on either side. And then I'm gonna use water and blend. And by switching up the value and having there be a highlight in the middle part, it's gonna feel like it's coming out at you. It's kind of like if you guys did our honeybee tutorial. Um, I talked about how to, because the body is round, you kind of leave a highlight in the middle and transition to a darker value and that's gonna make it feel this way, roundish. And then we're just gonna keep on doing it section by section. do my next red stripe and if you need to make like even if you draw it out and you're starting to paint it and you're like wow that area is way thicker than I anticipated it's okay to make adjustments as you're painting it don't be afraid to do that also I know that when we paint things for other people we want them to be perfect and we're afraid that if we paint something and it doesn't look great that they won't appreciate it and from someone who actually has received postcards from you guys, um, I can tell you from experience, it does not matter. It really does not matter if it's perfect or not. Just, just the thought that 
somebody would take time out of their day to make something for someone else that they don't even know personally. I mean, that's all that matters. That's really all that matters. So please don't let imperfections stop you from taking the time out to do something kind for somebody else. Okay. Oh my, line started to get really thin down here, so I'm gonna thicken them up. And I'm kinda still following, I'm mimicking the lines that we have on the top and the bottom. You see, mm -hmm. it's that same angle. Remember to use water to lighten up your values. If you want a lighter red, you're gonna use water. And my hand is shaking. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah, it's like, mm. <laughs> Getting rusty. Getting rusty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to squeeze one more red stripe onto this. You're right, though. It wouldn't look. Right? If you it just left as, it, yeah. you gotta, you got to close it up. It's you not know? as aesthetically pleasing. Great word, Keenan. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going into my blue a little bit. Kind of grateful I left it a lighter blue or else you would see that blue underneath. Now another trick that we can do to give this a little bit more dimension is on this back part right here in this area like right before it changes, you can put a darker red there. So if I take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black and mix with my red, or if you're using like a really light red and you can just use like a lot of, do you know what I'm saying? Like if your value is really light, you can just use a light, the full red instead of adding black to it, that would work too. Yes, is, is it saturated, is that yeah. the word? Yes, so by just taking a little bit of darker value right here. It's pushing this part back and showing that this is sticking out. See how much more dimension that brings? Just Looks by putting curved. that value in. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, pretty darn good. And then if you just wanna clean up your corners or tighten things up, sharpen them up, nothing wrong with that. I have some pencil marks here. I'm not gonna erase them just yet. I'll probably erase them after this is totally dry or maybe not at all. Cause you know what? I don't mind a pencil mark. It doesn't bother me. I like pencil marks, they're cool. I think so too. Okay, now we can do our blue part. So, if you still wanna use your round two, you can. If you wanna switch to your round six, you absolutely can do that too. I'm gonna to use a lot of Tahoe blue to make it a darker value blue so it doesn't match my sky and also because our American flag has a dark blue on it. I mean, it's not navy, but it's a strong blue. It's not like a baby blue. It's a good blue. It's a good blue. And if you want to do hints of stars, but don't, want to actually make stars, you can do circles. 
Let's just see what that looks like. Okay? Okay. Just like white dots. Because guess what? You can always paint over it. Doesn't look too bad. Let me keep going with it. What do you think, Keenan? Do you like the white dots or no white dots? I do like the white dots. I do I, too. I noticed when you drew them, you did off offset. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of interesting that even though you did offset, those top two still lined up pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to do them offset because if you look at the stars on the American flag, they are offset from each other. Yeah, they've got that pattern at a, a nice yeah. diagonal pattern where the spaces are. If you have some bleed proof white, you can always go back over. Or if you have masking fluid, you can use masking fluid to mark off the spaces. There's multiple ways you can do this. And none of them are wrong. Okay. Good little hint of stars. I like that. Okay. And the very last thing is just putting in our pole. I'm going to just use black. Just do a black. Now, whenever you're doing black lines or lines and you want to keep them kind of thinner, you want to get your paintbrush with paint. I like to kind of squish my paintbrush back and forth so then the excess paint gets rubbed off and it also pinches my brush. And then I'm going to do a vertical hold so it's basically up and down and just lightly, light pressure. Put in your pull. If you want to do that a couple of times to thicken it up, you can. If you want to do a little ball at the top, right? Don't, isn't there like a little ball at the top of poles? Yeah, because usually the pole is like a brass color. Yeah. And they have the brass topper. Well, we're going to do black. There we go. And that's it. That's it for our postcard tutorial. So, um, and I didn't mention this before, you don't have to paint this for them. Um, you can paint whatever you want. This is just something that we put out there to give you an idea if you're not entirely sure what to paint. Um, again, this is the best thing out of our box. It's the best thing that you can do for somebody and it really does make a difference. I know that for our Let's Make Art Matter for June that we just had for Connie. Um, she recently passed away, but her family did this post about how um, getting these postcards in the mail was such a positive experience for them. Um, and it really made Connie's last days on this earth just so beautiful and filled with love and filled with art. And it meant so much to their entire family and to Connie, and they looked forward to going to the mail every day and seeing what was there and seeing the sweet messages. So I urge you to take time out to do this. This is a great activity you can do as a family um, or with friends. And let's just show Sherry and Rick that we support them and we love them. Let's get involved. Let's be aware of post-traumatic stress disorder and let's support our military. Is there anything you wanna add, Keenan? Kind of. Yeah. So you actually painted 21 stars. Uh -huh. And it's one number shy of how many um, veterans commit suicide every day. Wow. Yeah. I'm a little emotional. Um, we had a briefing this weekend on a Drill. The statistics for how many people decide not to kill themselves if you're just direct and tell them that you love them or tell them that you've noticed they've changed is drastic they mm -hmm. they immediately they latch on and they talk to you and they tell you they'll they'll be direct with you that they've been 
having those thoughts or feeling lonely and it's just a simple hey yeah I've noticed and I yeah. see you and that's really all it takes oh thank you so take the time out to show support to show people that you care because um, it makes a difference you can help people and then for those who maybe um, didn't get that opportunity or it just wasn't what they needed but still show them and their family that we love and support them and that they are not forgotten. And um, that's it. Bye.